I'm going to be talking through how to integrate touch-free tooling for Unity into a Unity demo. Uh, we have a bakery demo here, and if I run through it to start with uh, on its own, it's a clickable demo where you have some buttons and you can select options. Um, and it uses Unity's default input system. Um, and if I go into the project, you can see it's just got a canvas. It has a main camera, which is an orthographic camera, which is important for touch-free um, tooling. And it has a series of screens um, within the canvas that you can toggle between that are all just standard Unity UI. So if I go down to uh, open the package that you will have downloaded for touch-free. I'm going to be using the beta package, but this will be the same for any package that you get. So if we open the tooling package, that comes with a .unity package file, which you're going to import into your project. It comes with some API documentation. So when, once you've imported it and integrated into your project, you can open the index.html and that will take you to the class diagrams, and uh, you can go and look at all of the information with documentation for all of the classes and, and variables. And then also it comes with the version TXT just to make sure. So if I bring this into your project, you can either do this by double clicking if you have another project open, or you can drag it into your project panel inside of Unity. And once you've done that, it'll bring it in like any Unity package does, um, and you can press import for all of the things, or you can also choose not to include the examples or whatever you wanted to. Um, I'm going to import all of them and bring them into the project. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, so once that's imported, um, we've got a series of things in here. Firstly, there's an example scene that you can go to, um, and that just has some buttons. And then if I hit play, that will run. Um, so long as we've got touch-free service installed and set up for our machine, you can move a cursor around by moving your hand around. I'm hovering my hand above my uh, keyboard here, and I can press... Um, any of the buttons by moving forwards because I have it set up for air push. Um, and effectively that's that's all that this example is providing, um, a way for you to press buttons. So all that cons consists of is a couple of prefabs um, and a couple of extra objects. But if I go back into our scene that we had for our bakery demo, um, what I can do is actually add the touch-free client, which is part of the tooling inside of tooling and then prefabs. Um, and I can bring that into my project, and that brings a uh, series of, of objects that we might, we we may want to change. But um, to start with, I think we can leave them exactly how they are. Um, and like I said earlier, so long as you've got a an orthographic camera, um, the camera connector will automatically detect it um, and use it. If you have a perspective camera, um, the touch-free tooling will uh, act slightly strangely, but so long as you're using a 2D UI, you, uh, an orthographic camera will work perfectly fine. Inside here, we've got a cursor canvas, which has a cursor that comes with uh, touch free tooling as an example. Um, and that's all you need to do. You just need to drag it into the project. Um, I'm just going to hit save, and then I'll hit play. And you'll see that, although yes, I can carry on clicking, um, so if you had this as a touchscreen application, you could still click all of the buttons as normal. Um, but you can, I can also bring in my my hand hovering above the screen, similar to before, and I can press all of these buttons, um, select some delicious olive rolls, and uh, go on to the all the way through the UI by pressing all of the buttons. So that's getting uh, touch-free tooling integrated into your project. There's a lot of things that you can do on top of that. Um, so for example, if you wanted to change the cursor, you can uh, unpack this prefab and you can swap out whatever your cursor is. Um, you can also extend the cursor. So um, if I open up the dot cursor into Visual Studio here, following the API documentation, you can see what the things that are extendable um, and you can modify them as much as you want. So uh, this one, this comes straight from the touchless cursor. So that's the base class that you'll want to uh, inherit from. Uh, and that comes with a, a couple of uh, different colors that you can set, the ring thickness and ring size. So if you, have a, if you have a scaling ring or anything like that, you can change that. And then a bunch of virtual functions that you can override um, to handle the input action, for example, which is the data that we get from the service 
um, which comes with a, a bunch of information. You can show or hide the cursor however you want. So you can you can fade it or you can uh, make the cursor pop. There's a lot of different things that you could do and you can set the values here as well. Um, so our dot cursor, for example, uh, overrides um, the handle input action and then it changes, it sets, sets a load of update cursors and growing and shrinking depending on if you click or if you release. Um, and it hides the cursor if you receive a cancel event. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do from there.